Hey there, lovely soul. This is Infinity, and thank you so much for joining me for your Cancer April 2021 reading. This is for Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is a general read, so some part or maybe all of this reading will apply to you. For personal reads, please check out my website. And if you're unfamiliar with me, again, I'm Infinity. I am a shaman, a mystic, a medical medium, a distance energy healer, channel medium, psychic, soul guide, ascension coach. And I uh, have a lot of offerings on my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. Please check it out. I also offer free ebooks, um, meditations, and spiritual guidance, energy updates on my podcast. So please check that out as well. But for right now, we already got our card to start off your reading here today, Cancer. So let's get into it with our uh, Moonology card. Oh, I love this card so much. Believe in the impossible. There you go. Believe in the impossible. Blue Moon, such an awesome card. Whenever this card comes up, I'm always kind of ready for some kind of, oh, there's our first card. The hero font, first tarot card of your reading there. Cancer is the hero font. So yeah, this is gonna be probably pretty spiritually based. Um. Ooh, just got out a, a little chunk here. Is this? Let's see what's next. The devil. I really like this card a lot. Uh, nine of pentacles. Yeah, this card is, or this reading cancer is big time. Uh, seven of pentacles. And then we have the chariot. Wow. Look at this. Uh, three out of our five cards are from the major arcana the hero font the devil nine of pentacles seven of pentacles and the chariot yeah okay cancer cancer there's our card okay and the Knight of Swords coming in last year. Oh my goodness gracious. Where to begin? <laughs> the Hero Font. The Devil. Nine of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. The Chariot. And the Knight of Swords. So... Uh, we definitely have a major shift coming. Um, where you're you're either at that point now or ready to believe that you can actually step out of your current paradigm and situation i'm picking up on this isn't for everybody this is going to be for some people here that's going to get this because i'm <sighs> there's a lot coming through so um so i'm feeling with this <laughs> this hero font card is my freaking cats. It's like a full moon tonight. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this hero font card is uh, really saying that you've been, are, and, and are going to continue to be guided in this way towards a very new dynamic for yourself. Um... That I'm talking to one or more of you that have been 
um, in a physical state that hasn't been very good. Um, but you've been working on yourself, changing energies around you, even moving or changing your diet, um, getting into a meditative practice, um, getting more spiritual, connecting with your guides, really starting to buy into the whole um, angels and archangels and guardian angels and ascended masters and those divine beings on the other side that can absolutely help you through things and guide you and <laughs> um no surprise here getting believe in the impossible um with this reading because it's really you're being put in a place where you're going to have choices to make about that are directly correlated to your beliefs, to what you're open to, to limitations, to illusions, to programs that have been in your world, in the world of a lot of people. Just what isn't possible? What is bullshit? What is true? Um, what are the woo-woo things that is actually a thing and real and I can guarantee you it's kind of a lot but it really also depends on where you go who you work with what the deal is because not everybody is like I call myself the real deal there are people who um, just quite simply aren't and <laughs> they are frustrating people because they kind of give us all a bad name um, and it makes it a little bit more challenging for people to let go of fears and to, to, as they're being guided, you know, in places. So, and I get it. I totally get it. Um, <laughs> however, you, you are being guided. You are being guided there. Check out that, that owl up there. Um, with her and her pentacles, you're definitely being guided here uh, to move in a new direction. It is very balanced. Check this out with the nine and the seven of pentacles. Um, very interesting here. Balanced with this male and this female energy. He is connecting, planting seeds. Um, planning for the future, getting information about what he should do. Um, it's going down. It's like with this, with this artwork here, um, whoops, here, um, energy is being planted and going down. And then we have the nine of pentacles. We have a female. We have this balance with the male and the female. We have, you know, him um, feeling going down and being grounded. We have her going up and connecting with this beautiful owl and having this um, this resource, this wise, knowledgeable resource represented here by the owl, which would um, connect you directly to your guardian angel, archangels. Um, specifically, uh, Archangel Gabriel coming through pretty strong here for you. We have the chariot, which is very much an Archangel Gabriel card, um, really pulling you towards the future. I mean, we have, I mean, look at this. We have the nine of pentacles giving us inform you know coming down with information being guided we have the seven of pentacles planting those seeds and then we have this forward movement but getting getting our our um our past and our present in alignment getting our our need for security and control and knowing what what we're doing and where we're going working with the flow and having faith and trust and allowing for 
for the energies to come through without needing to control. So the chariot is is a messenger card. It's telling you that you're being asked to go forward and to reconcile your programming, your inner struggles with moving forward, with staying in, in place, with being somebody who has ailments, issues, chronic conditions, whether they're physical or mental or energetic um, and knowing that you can go forward. Now with this devil card, it's always a, a look, especially in this deck, it's, it is a guardian angel coming through and saying, look, you've been tied up and, and stuck in illusionment. And please let me like really extending out the hand, really let me take you to a new place directly underneath of that the chariot so um a lot of energy movement going forward bringing down from above really having that understanding of a greater power pulling you in a direction remember this started off with believe in the impossible this is really asking that of you because i feel like the people that i'm talking to here are resistant have very like kind of set ideas of things and that really is the devil that really is the illusionment the programs the thought forms the experiences the history of yourself and also things come through um karmically through your through past lives and karmic um um hooks that you bring in it's not a bad thing but it's it's a certain form of energetic baggage that you bring into these lifetimes that that sets you up with a certain place on the train that says this is your perspective and until you deconstruct everything to see that for what it is it, it makes it difficult to um uh reconcile that energy in your current life and what you're supposed to be doing so or what you know is part of your mission i should say so there needs to be this um very conscious and intentional effort on your part to let go of of energies that are rigid that are set in a certain type of framework that don't allow for the expansion of the impossible because anything is possible trust me i was once a chronically ill person and then i was literally taking taken in a meditation from my guys and and that was the beginning of everything else for me shown um, so much information and, and that I wasn't really a sick person. I was just really energetically sensitive and this natural healer and all of this stuff that, that I would never have figured out on my own. But once it came to me, once it hit, once I saw it for what it was, I knew it was true and it helped me to move forward. Now, I'm not chronically ill. I help people who are chronically ill. I don't have any pain. I don't, well, I don't have any chronic pain. We're all, we all feel aches and pains and a little ouchy sometimes with, with the pressure of gravity and energies coming through. But that's very normal for all of us. But being, having a chronic illness in any way is not supposed to be our condition. And it was for me only because I didn't know what, what I was doing on a very energetic level. I was naturally healing. I was naturally transmuting energy. I was naturally picking up on all sorts of stuff that just left me wrung out since I was a child. So the more that we can open up to information coming through for us um, on a divine level, believe in the impossible, understand that things can change even the most drastic of circumstances um, for ourselves and it's just up to us to decide if we're going to follow certain paths so again if you are somebody who deals with any kind of chronic physical condition please 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 take a look at um my website because i do help people um with all sorts of situations okay 
We're going to get a sacred geometry card. We got protection. Safeguard yourself. Interesting. Let's see what this has to say. This is a fairly new deck to me. A card number 44, protection. Safeguard yourself. Um, I have not seen this card before, so I'm very interested in what it has to say. Um yeah pretty new deck to me so without further ado let's get into it create uh nope that's not it <laughs> thought i had it i'm like wait a second there false start let's try again Safeguard yourself. I am protected from negative energy and ill harm. When the protection card shows itself, it is a reminder of the importance to safeguard yourself against unwanted energies in your life right now. It may also be a gentle reminder of the significance of protecting your energy on an everyday basis. There are many people around us whose vibration is lower than our own. Consciously or subconsciously, these people have built in radars to seek you out. Absolutely. They are attracted to your frequency and want to have what you possess. They are like vampires and can drain your energy very quickly, not realizing what they are doing, you or them. Then there are those people who seek out healing and can't manage their own energy, so they seek out yours. Be mindful of how you feel and limit sorry and listen to your intuition so yeah like i was just talking about um being a physical a psychic physical empath medical medium um shaman mystic all these things um but at the very base of it uh let's just say empath and me not even knowing that about myself made it very i didn't know anything about any of this stuff for i'm i'm 48 and at 39 I was clueless, so I went a very long time, very miserable with chronic pain from, I was, I had fibromyalgia and um, really what that was about was about energy and me soaking up energy from others, me being drained by, from my own energy by others without any kind of regulation. It's just like doors open, take whatever you want because I didn't know that was a thing, but it absolutely is. So that in itself can even be, can sound impossible. Like what other people can take your energy just by being around them? Most absolutely. And if we really think about it, like who are the people that, that you really, that you like or love or whatever, but you're like, Oh, I really need to have energy to go there, to talk to them, to be around them. Or I know that after I do, I'm just so wiped out, you know, that sort of thing. And it can, it doesn't need, they don't necessarily, some people are really obvious to spot once you know what to look for. Um, and for more on empaths and energy and energy vampires, please see my eBooks. I have the Essential Empath Guide and Negative Energy and Psychic Attack and How to Eliminate a Negative Energy. So please take a look at that. Okay, continuing. Sacred Geometry. The pentagram in this card is a magical symbol. It has been used to protect against evil and shield the user's home or when worn, guard the user against negativity. The pentagram pertains to either to ether or spirit and the double circle on the outer encases the protection all within. Sorry. And the double circle on the outer encases and protects all within. The protection card is an excellent gridding template and will work well with uh, Raven Magic card six and create a more powerful grid. Practical applications. There are many ways in which to protect yourself, but the best way is through intention and placing etheric grids around your physical and auric fields. Carrying crystals that are specific for protection 
is fabulous as is creating grids in your home or office with intention card numerology is nine and crystal suggestions jet black kyanite black tourmaline labradorite, labradorite and bronzite and I'm, i would ask add and i'm surprised it's not in here i would add um chugnite and black tourmaline obsidian as well um those three um typically the black crystals are going to be very protective um so no no surprise here that we do have a raven in with this card i'm pretty sure and um again just speaking to connections and energy and being guided you're definitely like this just really makes me feel like most definitely i'm talking to somebody an empath a light worker or empaths and light you know plural who um take on or give more energy who don't know to protect themselves or don't do it consistently really don't think about it don't take it seriously these are not judgments this is just a very very common thing with empaths and light workers especially those who aren't aware of themselves trust me i know all about that and i deal with it a lot so please again take a look at my website at the um very specific full of information um ebook on empaths and the other one on negative energy because in that one negative energy or yeah um what is psychic attack and how to eliminate negative energy has a ton of information there um on what it is and how to eliminate it and regulate it and shield yourself from it okie dokie let's move on I get itchy when I connect. So let's move on to our. Um, oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at our bottom card. The two. I'm getting used to the whole microphone thing. The two of swords. Um, as you can see there, she just is kind of being taken advantage of. Doesn't know what's going on. Can't see where she's going um but feels things so that's very much an empath that needs regulation control clearing healing so yeah <laughs> yeah 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 okay so we're gonna get into the archetype cards and we're only getting into two of the sections there's four sections um, the selves, the places, the tools, and the initiations or the themes um, for, for archetypes. And so we're just going to get into the, the selves. So what archetype, what self archetype, I think that's it. It won't, it won't shuffle and it won't go down. What self archetype you need to pay attention to now what's being what's coming to you and then we're going to get into the tools so what tool do you need um need or need to let go of to help you at this time And there it is. Okay. So first card, we have the orphan. Card number five. This is the aspect of self we need to pay attention to or that is really going to influence or has influenced or is an influence. Hmm. Interesting. And the sword for your tool. Very, very interesting. So let's see what we get here. whoa right to it look at it right to it almost past it um the wonder child oh, sorry the wounded to the wonder child the wounded child the abandoned the beggar 
To study the orphan is to study the deep and challenging energy of our time. We are ever more connected yet face collective isolation. The refugee crisis haunts our planet. Children are separated from parents and the earth begs for our attention. We are in a time of universal orphanages, of nature, of each other, of our own hearts. Take refuge in the fact that we all share the, this core wound and dilemma. It is normal to fear this card. It haunts the caverns of our soul. When it appears, take time, real time, to be in the presence of the feelings this card stirs in you. Let it humble you. What are you starving for? What is the deep what is the deepest gift you could imagine given giving to others? What has been rejected is quite possibly what is most needed, dear one. Ugh, oh, this is a heavy, heavy card. It really is. It makes me emotional tapping into this energy. Whew. Um, okay, let's continue. Deep solace, deep acceptance, deep love is when light and when dark, distracted waters... Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> waters. Distracted hates and avoids controlling, limiting. Um, access this archetype through creative acts like drawing painting or writing keep it simple ask the orphan what it wants to draw make or say and tenderness beyond tenderness is required imagine hold your holding yourself in your hands to recognize that each one of us fears rejection and isolation is to take one step towards the orphan more kindness always oh goodness gracious you know what i'm picking up with this is you may not be an orphan but there has been a, a decent amount of abandonment, a decent amount of going, doing on your own, doing for yourself, being on your own, being there for others who aren't there for you, which is a lot of kind of how it is for the empath and the light worker, especially when you don't know. But it's really interesting that we have protection coming out then the orphan, then the sword we're going to get into. Um, it, this reading is just really solidifying itself more and more and more. Um, so lastly, what I will say, at least for now with the orphan, is um, it's really a time to be there for you, um, for yourself, to think about how you may have in the past allowed your um your a lot given your power away or or had or not been not <sighs> not being able to take care of yourself because you've taken care of others this is also coming through but abandonment being a big like feeling like around you nobody's the orphan it's you that's the orphan you that gets left behind you that gets abandoned you that gets rejected because of um your, maybe your perspective as an empath is somebody who can really see through things and and I get that I've I had that problem I used to start I started giving psychic readings when I was five and um but as I got older um I really didn't I didn't see it for what it was that I was picking up on things that um, that are more underground. <laughs> like to me, it was very 
obvious and still things are very obvious but I recognize now of course that they're not obvious to everybody but because I'm super energetically connected etc 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 um there is this thing that happens where you can tend to put a spotlight on things that others don't want a spotlight on. Um, I don't know really how else to say this, but sometimes those things will tend to get you rejected and leave you abandoned kind of thing. Uh, this is just something it's coming up here. And then we're going to get into the sword for the tool. Almost there. There it is. <laughs> Uh, the knife, the blade, the weapon. To use the sword is to decide. The blade separates one reality from another. The choice is made and all else falls away. If you find the sword in your grasps, grasp, you can no longer hesitate. This weapon requires a clear and decisive mind and a willingness to act. An onlooker may think the sword bear is hasty and violent, but the most compassionate and responsible gesture is one that is honest, swift, and accurate. Our first encounter with the sword is at birth, when the cord we share with the, with the mother is cut. This moment defines our separation from her and begins our journey of becoming ourself. We must make these cuts again and again if we are to grow. Decisions shape our life, and the sword is an infamous shaper of destiny. Yeah, it's all about choices. If, if you really stop to think about what is life, it's choices. One choice after another after, after another. Now, when we're little and babies and young and adolescents, um, for the most part, you know, they're... I mean, especially when we're little, little, we don't have a lot of choices about our overall life. But still, if we think about a two-year-old playing with this toy and then getting up and playing with that toy and then wanting to go outside, these are all choices. These are all, these are things that we move with the energy from the time we're babes. <laughs> um, okay, so... Let's see. Uh, when light cutting through is what is essential, cutting through to what is essential, when dark, hasty, backstabbing, a dull and painful blade. Excuse me. Contemplate the Buddhist philosophy of the first and second arrow. Uh, swing, swing the sword once with precision and commitment more than that will be painful for everyone involved and boundary making prioritization and clarifying are all gestures made possible by the sword the sword is a metaphor for the pen and the bow the artist or the brush the artist the artist's fierce and graceful tools. Sorry, it's in red. It's really hard to read. Um, so this is about making decisions and separation and, and a willingness to act. Um... And so kind of going back here, I'm being shown the, the, the read here with a lot of action, the, especially these last two cards with the chariot and the knight of swords. Um, and so there's a sword with the knight of swords and you get the sword, um, being pointed out to me, uh, And, and, yeah, again, empath energy here. Um, I think we're, we're dealing here with a situation where we don't want to 
let go, leave others behind, um, even though we know that there's certain situations and people that are very much not good for us. We heard about energy vampires here. Um, so it feels like there's energy, there's people that are that you're there for that maybe aren't there for you, but there's decisions that need to be made about cutting ties, cutting cutting cords with people, um, e even if you have left them physically or they're gone from your life one way or another, there's still energy cords attached. So please look into that ebook um, about energy cords, um, the importance of energy cords and, or the importance of cutting energy cords and my companion meditations that go into all of that and take you through that self-healing. Um, so I'm seeing that big time here. Uh, and the other thing I'm, I'm seeing here with this is the need to be more discerning with the people that you connect to. Like, we want to help everybody. Trust me. I get that. I feel that too. But not everybody is suitable for us to be around. Not everybody is safe for us. Um, we need to protect our energy. We need to... We need to think about our time. We need to think about what is good for us as well as what is good for others. We need to take ourselves as empaths and light workers out of the energy of of the of the orphan, um, or of being afraid to orphan others. And so, with that, we tend to take on too much because of we don't the fact that we don't we know what it feels like to be rejected to be abandoned and we don't want to do that to others but as an empath as a light worker especially if you're a healer of any kind seriously or not it's super important to know who to put energy into who to work with who is you know, worthy of that energy, of the healing, of the guidance. And, and if, if it, you're not a professional, even in your own private life, who is, who is good? Is there a balance? If there's people in your life that, that is, are just taking and giving minimally to stay within your energy because they 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 crave it they need it. it whether it's your energy your guidance your wisdom your resources your connections whatever it is but it's completely out of balance because there's way more output and not a whole lot back and that's consistent over a designated amount of time that you can look at that's the kind of energy that needs to be cut out decisively. You don't have to be cruel about it. You don't have to be um, confrontational about it. But we definitely need to, to, to detach from, from people who, um, who pull from us and our resources and keep us from going forward. Now, our last card is... Wow. We got this card, um, I believe, in our first reading. The um, healing, first reading or second reading? I think it was actually the second reading. So that would have been Taurus. Um, healing the earth, love, humility, and respect. So healing the earth. Um, let's get into that. Card number 20. Okay, love, humility, respect, healing the earth. We the humans have left the care of the planet to the great and the unseen spirits all about us. Some, it is true, have taken up the burden created by the many and we rage and race towards an abyss, telling ourselves that what matters is only today. But tomorrow matters for those yet to be born and for the wisdom within you that can 
be remembered by the children of the future. Yet the forests have been murdered, the waters polluted, the gifts of the earth brought to the surface and used as playthings. It is time to heal and to remember, for the great ones can do so much, but the true healing must take place in our hearts and move to our actions. Earth healing can be felt what felt on those special days when the gates open and we can feel the flood of energies pour down we can help weave those energies into the people by demonstrating what matters most we can choose to help our mother the earth to be of service and to have a humble attitude and expression of energy towards her we can walk gently and openly and know we must help her we can pick up the fallen bird plant a tree speak the truth and live like this life and this planet matter it is temporary this life but it matters what we do with it and now you are being asked to be of service through expressing love humility respect for the earth in your actions let this greater goddess let's sorry let this great goddess nurturing the earth nurture you too this path will take you away from the disposable the ungrateful the careless and move you into a deeper truer expression of your soul and illumination i play my part in caring for the earth i support the great ones in their healing work and embrace being a child of the earth okay so what we've got here is um a couple of things number one like it's healing you so that is coming up yet again, sweet one, that you are in some type of physical energetic pain and you need help with that. It could be spiritual attachments, um, karmic hooks, parasites, entities, all sorts of different things are possible. And a lot of times it's a combination of these things. Um, and so healing definitely is... A theme here protection is a theme here um, believe in the impossible working with spirit to um, allow for the energies to come down as they are uh, what we're what we talked about earlier with the uh, the changing of the month into a new month with the Stargate coming up and all that good stuff um, timelines are forming and you're being um, given and sent information from the divine counterparts that we have from the spirits that help heal and work with Gaia the energies of the other planets within our solar system family are all working together at this time to reach out and work with those of us who are here in service who are incarnates who are light workers and empaths who are here to help assist Gaia in raising the frequency of the planet to raise the frequency of each other Remember, the higher the frequency you are, the more others will be attracted to that energy. So always um, keeping yourself healed, protected, and cleared is very, very important because you will know when you're cleared energetically when something is off. And so that's one of the things, one of the big, aside from connecting to soul and being on your soul mission and all that stuff, the other thing with healing and clearing your body and grounding, connecting, infusing with Gaia and doing this whole big thing that I that I personally do with people is to get you into a neutral state so you can feel when something is off, when whichever particular chakra is um is either being pulled upon or being opened and it, like there's different things that can happen so it's either energies coming in that are activating your chakra in a very positive way raising your vibration or it could be other people that are coming in and pulling from your chakras pulling from your energy in a very um uh destructive way so again with the sword coming up here saying we need to make these decisive and device and 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 de de to make these decisions very decisively quickly is to have a, a, a 
a body that's clear and in alignment to help you through um, understanding the energies around you. And um, I guess lastly, you know, doing your part energetically, physically, whether it's through not buying disposable, using much less plastic, being conscious of of resources, um, really working on your your energetic footprint, being mindful of your energy in general. Your energy is so super powerful that it radiates out infinitely. Whatever you send out comes comes back magnified. So you being it out of alignment, you being in distress, you being frustrated, you be feeling abandoned, you feeling confused, you having illusions of how things work and keeping you um maybe from understanding or moving forward is a lower are all all lower vibrations so the the message here is the need to to really understand and educate yourself about energy being an empath being a light worker healing on a molecular quantum level um working in that in that state of detaching uh programs from from your hard drive deleting those those programs putting in new programs that are true that are real remember again started off with believe in the impossible so oh boy so to transform yourself to evolve yourself is what's needed here um to remember this the archetype that we need to work on and think about at this time is the orphan your tool is the sword so there's the sword is not there's no ifs ands or buts about it it's it is what it is these decisions need to be made for yourself so you can move forward remember this card on the bottom here this two of swords this is not this is a it's funny because it's not even a card that was pulled but i was guided to take a look at it and it really feels like this is kind of the overall theme like here um and the need to to move forward it's like this is what's underlying energy this is what's what you authentically is this is this energetic moving forward following again yet um what is that i think that is a um a, a raven or a crow but nevertheless we have these two very powerful birdies here um signifying a lot of guidance wisdom um upper level kind of knowing business so with that all said dear beautiful cancer i want to thank you for being here i thank you for receiving this these messages i hope that you've that you've uh you feel validated that you've gotten um information for your future and uh resources again for you to look into all on my website to help with this uh and i hope you have a beautiful april there's a lot coming through for you a lot to transform a lot to 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 think about um so <sighs> but it's all very positive very very positive you are in a transformational state you are being pulled forward you are being guided just release what holds you back release and identify those things that need to to let go and what needs to transform all right dear sweet cancer have a beautiful april thanks for being here again i want to remind you um please subscribe and like this video give it a like if you do like it if you have watched it all the way through and leave a comment let me know how this resonates for you okay all right bye for now have a beautiful april see you later